Welcome to the third lecture in Module 3, and in this lecture we'll cover the active record design pattern. Now if you recall, we've described the fact that Rails is based upon the model view controller design pattern. And what active records does for you is it links together the business logic and the data access tiers. It's the M in the model view controller design pattern. The active record design pattern was created by Martin Fowler and it's described in his book Patterns of Enterprise Application Architectures. It's commonly used in Ruby as a means of persisting data to your database so that you can recall that data later, St save it and then pull it back up when you need it later in your web application. So the active record design pattern is used to perform the CRUD operations, create, read, update, and destroy without worrying about the specific underlying database platform that you're using. So it works with SQLite, MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server, etc. Even though these databases are based on SQL, they're all based on that, they have slightly different syntax. So Active Records takes care of this for you. One query works on all of these database platforms. So let's talk more now about the Active Record design pattern. This is a beautiful design pattern that really allows you to link together object-oriented programming and relational databases. So most uh, programming languages today are object-oriented. And this is a big problem because relational databases are not. And so how do we make these two work together? This is what Active Records does for you. It creates what's called an object relational mapping. It maps the constructs in an object-oriented language to those in a relational database. It automatically converts, in other words, between the various objects and classes in an object-oriented database and stores them in the tables and columns of a relational database. So this creates what's in effect a virtual object store that you can use as a part of your back-end database. Here's how that object relational mapping works. First, the object-oriented language feature, a class, gets mapped to tables in a relational database. Objects get mapped to records, or in other words, rows in the table. And then the attributes get mapped to particular record values, in other words, the columns in the database table. Now, the active record design pattern is provided for you in Ruby using a module called Active Record. And this is built into Rails as well. And what this module allows you to do is establish a database connection to the database, to create database tables, to specify associations between various tables in your database, and to establish this object relational mapping between the classes in your Ruby code and the underlying tables, rows, and column in your relational database. Finally, it allows you to perform CRUD operations over these uh, objects that are in your Ruby code and it actually makes them work properly in the relational database that underlies the application. The Active Record module is built directly into Rails as I've just described and so this um, this is a prime example of convention over configuration that we've talked about previously. Don't fight against it. Active Records does a lot for you in a Rails application so let's learn how to use it properly. So let's investigate how this works in Rails. The active record establish connection method, which is a part of the base class, this is the method that reads your database.yaml file and makes the actual connection to an underlying database. The migration object is used to incrementally evolve your database over time. And these migrations can add things to your database or you can actually remove uh, tables or columns from your database as well. So you can go both directions with a migration. The schema.define method uses the existing database to create your schema.rb file. And so what this is is a way of programmatically expressing your database in a portable format. And sometimes people refer to this as a DSL or a domain specific language. So what's very powerful about this is this schema can be used and, uh, to connect Rails to any database that Active Records supports, and that's a lot. Let's take a look at how Active Records integrates into a Rails application. I've opened up the blog application, and if we look under the config directory, we'll find again the database.yaml file. And once again, these are the three databases that Rails is pre-configured to work with. Again, the established connection method in Active Records uses this configuration file in order to create a particular database, and this is the name of the database, this is the type of the database, 
and then the various parameters associated with that database can be provided. So again, the established connection uh, method uses this. Next, let's take a look at the DB directory and here we'll see the two migrations. If we look under the migration, there's one of the migrations that was created when we did uh, when we ran the generator for creating posts and the other when we ran the scaffold generator for creating comments. Uh, this creates a new class that inherits the migration class from the active record module. And uh, finally, recall that when we ran rake db migrate, it created that database and then the database itself um, is the structure of that database is stored in the schema.rb file. Let's take a look again at how that rake db migrate function worked. So I'm in the blog application. If I cd to my database directory, we'll see that there's the development.sqlite3 file. This is my database file and the schema file. Let's remove them and rerun rake db migrate and it'll recreate these files. And again, we'll see that it's creating uh, the blog table and it's creating the comment table. Now, because I did this, I lost uh, anything that I've previously stored in this database, but I just wanted to show you again how to run rake db migrate and what it's actually doing, how it's using the active record classes in order to construct the database. Here are some of the conventions that are built into the active record module. So if you click create a class using active record base and you call it post, and if you look inside your blog application, under the model post, you'll see that that's exactly how that post um, object is created. It assumes that the database exists and that in the database there's a table called posts. And Rails has a mechanism for automatically pluralizing any objects that you create using the active record base class. Now the base class in the active record module inspects the post database and based upon what it finds there, it adds various uh, methods. So automatically you'll have a method for inspecting the title and the body of your post because you've used active records. In addition, it gives you the ability to query the database directly from your Rails application. And here, few, here are a few of the queries that you can perform. You can say post.all and it'll give you all of the posts that exist in the database. Post.first will return the first post that's stored in your database. And then you can do find by, give it a particular key and it'll look for the post ID uh, that has that particular val value and return it for you. What's very interesting as well is that Rails adds additional methods according to the attributes it finds in the table. So I can say post, find by title, provide a title, it'll search the database, return it if it finds it, return false if it doesn't find it. Now the interactive Ruby shell is an interpreter that's provided in Ruby. And this is a great uh, technique that you can use for debugging Ruby applications, is to open up the Ruby shell and inspect uh, an application using the command line. Uh, and the way you do this is you just type IRB within a terminal window. Now Rails console is IRB, but it preloads your Rails environment as well. And so you can inspect a Rails application directly through the terminal using Rails console. And the way you do that is you type Rails console within the root directory of your Rails application. Let's take a look at how to use the interactive Ruby shell and Rails console. So if I type IRB, this brings up the, Ruby, the interactive Ruby shell and I can interact with Ruby through it. This tells me that the um, 2 plus 2 equals 4, it gives the answer on the next line. Uh, we'll learn more about the Ruby uh, syntax and programming language in the next module. In this one, I just want to show you how to do a few simple things. And here I've stored the result of that computation in the variable A. And I can inspect that variable. Well, it tells me, for example, that it's a, a type a fixed num, and I can look at all the methods that are available to me as well for uh, the classes for uh, variables of type fixed num. Now, if I run Rails console, it opens up the interactive Ruby shell, but it loads my Rails development environment. And um, here I'll recreate the post that I previously. Um, did through 
through the use of forms, I'll now do that from the Rails console. So to do that, I'm going to reconstruct the title, which was my first post. And I'm going to reconstruct the body, which was life is great. And now, if I execute this, it actually stores this in uh, as a part of the. There's a variable now called p that uh, stores this. And if I want to save it to the database, I type p.save, and that actually saves this to the database that's connected to my Rails application. And I can interact with that database by saying post, which is the name of the class that I previously created by running my scaffold generator. And I can grab all of them. There's only one at the moment. I can grab the first one from the database. I can store that in a variable if I'd like to. And so um, at this point, what I'd like you to do is experiment with your Rails application through the command line. Create some additional posts. Create some comments connect them to these posts, and then um, retrieve them from the database using some of the commands that I've already shown you.